Welcome to this MySQL UnionDB cluster 8017 installation from scratch. So the first thing we do, we're going to install here the YUM repository um, of MySQL 8. So I download it, copy paste the link, and I will install it on the three machines I'm going to use. So I install it on MySQL 1, MySQL 2, MySQL 3. Now I will install the MySQL server and the MySQL shell that will help me to operate the cluster. So as you can see we're going to use 8017, the latest uh, MySQL now and also the easiest um, version of MySQL in a DB cluster because now you will see that we have something very cool uh, integrated to it. So now the installation is done. I will first disable SE Linux and I will also stop the firewall and disable the firewall. I will uh, in a new post, separate post, I will explain how to use the MySQL in DB cluster with SE Linux and firewall enabled. But this will be another post. So to keep this demo easy, I will disable the firewall and the SE Linux. So SE Linux is already disabled by default here, it's permissive, it's not, you can use set and force zero. And now I will stop the firewall and I will also disable it uh, so it won't uh, set up the firewall again as reboot. So now we can see no more rules. Now I will check in the var lock uh, error lock uh, of MySQL. I will search for the password because I will start MySQL and by default in MySQL 8 it is secure and it will generate a random password for the, the root user. So I start MySQL D now on all the three machines. These machines are just empty machines where I just installed the MySQL. As you can see, temporary uh, passwords have been generated, uh, all different on all the three servers. So now I will connect to a MySQL using the root at localhost user. I want to do SQL and I will use the temporary password that has been generated on all the three machines. I don't need to store it because we're going to change that. It's a temporary one. Okay, so the first thing I need to do now is to change the password because I cannot do anything else until I haven't changed the password. So I change the password and I put the same password everywhere on the three servers for my root at local host. Now I will create a user that I will be able uh, uh, to use remotely uh, to manage uh, the cluster. And uh, if you run MySQL shell locally on every node, you can generate one for you. But here I will create it because before there, there was an issue creating a user is that it was about the GTID that was created everywhere so they were all at uh, a GTID set different but we don't care anymore I will show you why so here we create a user and we give him the privileges we need uh, with the grant option very important because it will create the users in the shell so now I use the shell I will just make some setup in the shell so first I just copy uh, a new uh, prompt and now I will just make some options uh, to be uh, that are more convenient like I will save the history so between my session I keep my history and I will give him a max size of uh, 5000 this is just for the history So doing this it's just for making easier to use to operate so now 
I will use the shell only remotely on one of the server. It can be on the server itself, can be on my laptop, can be everywhere. And I will just configure a remote server and this time a remote instance and with the user we just created and I will uh, configure MySQL 1 first. So I will configure that instance. I provide the password that we created and uh, this time I can even store it uh, securely uh, on the system. So as we can see there is some settings that uh, the default are not correct for in a DB cluster that needs to be changed. So we let him change, he does it, he needs to restart the server, he, we, we let him do uh, also this from the shell. Now we do exactly the same on MySQL 2. And we do it again on MySQL 3. So we configure the servers and we restart all the three servers all from the, the shell, one shell, no need to go on the server, on the machines themselves. We can do all remotely with MySQL 8. So this is done. Now we're gonna create a cluster. So far nothing has changed since the previous version of MySQL cluster uh, in DB cluster 8. And now we do, we create our cluster. So first we connect to one of the servers. I connect it on MySQL 1 here. Now I create the cluster, I will call it my cluster. It's checking the configuration, it says it's okay, and uh, it will create the cluster. So now we can check, we can see that th there is a cluster with one node, which is the primary, 8017, and it is MySQL1. So I can check the instance configuration uh, of another one, just for fun. As we can see it's okay, it, it means that the configuration has been done remotely and that it has been restarted. So now I will uh, add an instance, I will add MySQL2 on the server. And here this is something new. What, have you seen that? It says, oh, the GTID, it's an empty machine. Uh, do you want me uh, to, do, uh, to clone it or to do incremental recovery? So we use clone. Clone is a new plugin in group application and in the MySQL server that allows to provision the data. Remember, a lot of people were complaining about the provisioning that, has, that they have to do it manually with their backup or a, or a dump. Now it's all integrated in MySQL server. So here, I just did it. it got, if I had data, it would have copied all my data. Now we can see MySQL 2 is part of it. I do exactly the same with MySQL 3 as the, the machine was empty or uh, it says, okay, I don't know if the data is consistent, let me uh, clone from one uh, of the node part of the cluster. So this is what we did. It copies all the data, it restarts the servers and they are part. You see, it copies 58 megabytes in one second and uh, it restarts the server server joined the group and now is online. So as you can see now it's very easy to s create a new MySQLDB cluster from scratch but also it's very easy to add a new member to an existing node and we don't need to take care about the data. So the data will stay consistent and uh, we don't need to deal with backups or dumps before adding a node. So this is very easy now. So this was the missing piece of the MySQL in ODB cluster story to be the most easiest HA solution for MySQL. So now this is done. So please enjoy MySQL in ODB cluster. Thank you for watching.